happened to me as life. So I recently did a video with my mum where I asked her uncomfortable questions about puberty and oh, boyfriends and yeah, all things like video. that. Oh. And you guys really enjoyed it. I That's found it good. fun. I don't know if mum did though. No, afterwards I was just like, oh, MD, what did I just do? Like, what was that video? So many. So we're gonna do part two today. <laughs> what does it feel like to give birth? Yes, I love you so much. Thank you. I love you too. What does it feel like? Okay, intense. Very intense. Basically, when I gave birth to Mia and Sin, it was really, really painful. It was like horrible, but that was just because I hadn't mentally prepared my stuff. I didn't understand like what it was like to give birth. You already know all this, don't you, Mia? I've yeah. talked about it. Yeah. But when I gave birth to Karma and to Koa, it was actually intense. It was hard work, but it wasn't painful and it wasn't scary. I felt so empowered afterwards. I felt amazing. I felt like as a woman, I'd like got an opportunity to do something amazing. And that was just because I I prepared myself mentally because you I did, did a lot of I, research. A lot of research. I just learned about what was going on. So when I was feeling all the sensations, I wasn't freaking out. I was like, this is good. This means the baby's coming out. Like each contraction is like a wave, an energy rush, pushing the baby further out, which means you're making progress. So basically it's all about breathing, having a really positive mindset and educating and informing yourself on what happens when you give birth. And then it can be the most beautiful experience ever without any pain. Yes, without any pain. <laughs> Honestly, it's amazing. That's a good answer, mom. I'm glad to hear yeah. that because I remember when I was little I used to think that giving birth would be so scary yeah. but now since like getting to experience kind of experience like yeah but you were there weren't learning you? about yeah what birth can actually be like. It is intense. It's we feel better It's about hard it. work. It's not called labour for no reason, but it's not called like pain or like a nightmare or anything, if you know <laughs> no, what I mean. Yeah. yeah. You should have to watch all the old family fizz videos around Karma's and Koa's birth if you want to know more. The next one is, how do I ask my mum if I can use tampons? Well, I think you just need to make sure that your mum's not super busy or super stressed and you've got some quiet time where you can both sit down and chat. Explain the reasons why. I mean, you're not asking to do anything wrong, are you? You're just asking whether you you can use a tampon but obviously it, is, it would be really nice if you and your mum could talk about it together. I think you approached me didn't you? You wanted a little yeah. bit of help and I asked her like why do you want to use because obviously most people start off using a pad when they start their period don't they? Yeah. And then when you transition to using a tampon it's kind of like I don't know like you're kind of growing up a little bit more so maybe your mum might feel a bit uncomfortable about using a tampon I don't know so but I would just ask your mum and I'm sure she'll be fine about it and she'll probably give you some yeah. tips and advice as well. I think your mum would be really happy if you were spoke to. I feel like mums would love it if their children approached them way more with questions. I feel like most people don't dare ask their parents anything but like we're always here for you guys like we'd love it if you spoke to us more. Oh. You, you are really good at that now but you weren't when you when you're like 12 and 13 you were a little bit more shy around me weren't you? I was definitely yeah I've I felt kind of embarrassed about yeah. something. Yeah, but now Mia, things, Mia so. does ask me a lot. Sometimes some things she feels very embarrassed about or shy, but it's completely normal. Like you <laughs> yeah. trust me now, don't you? Yeah, yeah. The next question is from Family Fizz Cuties, and she said, what age do you think it's necessary for me to get a boyfriend? I don't think there's any age for you necessary to get a boyfriend. If you're like eight or nine or 13, like really young, then I don't think it's an appropriate age. But as you get older, then people will probably start thinking like, oh, when are you gonna have a boyfriend? But like, you could be 45 and not have a boyfriend or a husband. And like, it's not necessary. It's all dependent on how you feel about it, isn't it? Yeah, I guess A boyfriend so, yeah. doesn't equal success. A boyfriend doesn't mean you're complete or that you've like achieved something good. Meeting somebody else and getting a partner should be like a complimentary thing in your life and mm. something which feels natural and right and just happens at the right time and it's not necessarily important. So yeah, I guess it, it's not necessary. It, you shouldn't really like force it. I think obviously the older you are, the more mature you are, then you'll be able to kind of be able to meet somebody you want to spend your life with or some of your life. And um, you'll probably more likely have a better experience the, the older you are because you're gonna be more mature. You might like when you're younger, I feel like you make a, bit, a few more mistakes and stuff so if me wanted to get a boyfriend round about now I like as you're coming up to 16 I, I wouldn't say no but I don't think it's necessary yeah you know what I mean like yeah the next question is what was your mum's biggest fear during puberty I guess I was quite apprehensive about starting my period it was more of a mixture of excitement and the unknown and so I yeah. talked about my period in this the first video of this series mm -hmm. like what happened I, I think it was just that. Maybe like body hair. I felt very insecure about because I had very, very dark, fuzzy body hair all over my body. Do you know what? It was more like peer pressure at school. Like if I was wearing the right types of clothes, things like that bothered me. Okay. Yeah. Th 
it like that yeah. I felt but not really anything to do with my body change I think I was quite happy about starting PB I think I was generally quite excited about becoming a woman I just wanted to grow up super fast which is not obviously a good thing but but yeah I felt more like pressure at school like did I fit in and things like that Okay, so the next question is from Mia's Life Fan and she said, how can I tell my mum that I'm old enough to wear makeup at school? Wait, like I said with the previous question, find a time when both you and your mum are relaxed and you've got some time to speak so she's not in a rush, she's not about to go to work or she's like super stressed and then she's more likely to listen to you properly, maybe offer to make her a cup of tea or something. <laughs> Get her and on your then, side. And then you explained this in your book, didn't you? I think yeah. this is a question in your book. I think you just need to approach her and say it calmly and don't get all like defensive straight away or like shout at her or because I know sometimes if you feel nervous about something you can kind of like have a bit of a bad energy or vibe around you so if you just yeah. approach it in a nice way and just explain the reasons why if your mum says no I don't like it obviously you're gonna feel like you're gonna get feel a bit annoyed aren't you try not yeah. to get annoyed and listen to your mum and then if she sees that you're acting grown up about it and you're respecting what she says then she'll probably think maybe I'm not saying it's definite but yeah. she might consider it in the future or yeah. soon because you'll see that you've acted in a grown up way to her so I think you've just got to show that you're mature grown up and respectful and then she's more likely to think that you're old enough to wear makeup but it's yeah. a personal decision isn't it yeah there's no like age for when you can start wearing makeup so it's like it's all dependent on the yeah. person like what kind of makeup also maybe you could suggest to your mum that you just want a very natural very minimal makeup your mum might hear that you say that you want to wear makeup and, and then she's like... thinking that you want to go like full James Charles makeover you know really big fake eyelashes and <laughs> yeah. like really super Super glam, full glam. So just tell her that actually you don't want to go full glam. You just want to have, I don't know, you just want to feel more feminine or like a little bit more confident or something like that. Yeah. The next question is, how would you feel if Mia had a boyfriend that she kept a secret from you? Oh, I'd be so gutted. I'd be so disappointed that like I kept it from a secret. Yeah, from you. I yeah. wouldn't. I wouldn't be angry with you, but I would because I know that like if you had been lying to me, I'd be really, really hurt. But if you kept a secret from me, I'd just be gutted because I'd be like, oh, why didn't you feel like you could tell me? Like I don't. I know you wouldn't do that, but I would be disappointed. Like, what is she? Why is she hiding it from me? And then you know, I'd then I'd be more worried and perhaps more like stricter and angry with you because I'd be like, why are you keeping it secret? And like, yeah, like I said, like speak to your parents guys about things you'd be surprised like that parents are mostly just want the best for you and they're probably going to be quite lenient in most situations but if you keep something secret from them or lie to them then they're going to be more annoyed about that and they're probably going to clap yeah. down harder i feel like if i did keep it a secret from you then it would like kind of ruin any trust and then you'd would be like you can't have a boyfriend yeah and then i'd be like what else are you hiding and then why are you keeping it secret is it because you're like meeting up secretly or something like that or, yeah you know, that wouldn't happen anyway would it be? no would it, would it? No, it wouldn't okay, happen. Okay. I would tell you. <laughs> oh, thanks. So the next question is, do you think it's okay to drink under age? No, definitely not. I don't. It's one, it's really unhealthy for you, especially as you're growing up. It can like damage your liver. It's illegal. It's very, very expensive. So you'll probably be wasting a lot of money. And then you can get yourself in some really, really bad situations. Basically, you could get very drunk and then not know what's happening. Or you could like hurt yourself. Somebody could take advantage of you. Definitely no, no. Well, it's a personal choice as an adult. But for me personally, I don't really like drinking. Me and Darren don't drink alcohol. We used to when we were younger, but we haven't drunk alcohol well since I was pregnant with Sienna. And um, we've been much happier for it. I think that's one of the reasons why our relationship is very strong and close. And we're very, very healthy as a result. I feel like alcohol is one of those things that kind of like you see other people doing so then you feel like you should do it but yeah it's, I don't, it's not that amazing alcohol I don't yeah. want to ever do it because I just no. feel like I don't think alcohol is necessarily addictive but like once you it can be addictive it if can you be have, physically addictive and psychologically oh, oh yeah it can yeah people can it's be alcoholics like, yeah. Every day they feel like they need a drink and they can shake and stuff. Me, when I was younger, if I, when I turned 18 and I started drinking, it was more like, you know, have some drinks at the weekend with my friends. It kind of like gave me some confidence, like feeling a little bit tipsy. I would be like, oh, I've got some confidence, but it's all fake. And then some people can rely on that feeling. Mm -hmm. Like they can only like socialize with people if they have a drink. Like, yeah. cause it gives them a false sense of like confidence. It's just, it's just really toxic and, and psychologically, socially and, and physically. physically. I know some people, would disagree with me on that but from my own personal experience alcohol hasn't like done any good for me for what whatsoever i just would rather spend my money on like um being healthy being healthy yeah yeah, yeah. i'd love to, i'd rather have like a cup of tea or like a, <laughs> I, I'm so a cup of tea. Yeah. 
So the next question is from Paige and she said, what age do you think it's okay to get a piercing you really want? It's a personal thing as well, and what kind of piercing? Yeah. Like Mia wanted her nose pierced when she was 12 and I thought a nose piercing and like her ear piercing was fine. But when it comes to other piercings, there's more risks with them. And I guess there's also some things where society will say, oh, a piercing there, there is really inappropriate. Like when I was young, if I wanted my nose pierced, my mom would say no, because she's like super strict Christian. Whereas I think a nose piercing was okay. Or like a belly button, to some mums, a belly button piercing might be okay. And then for me, I think it's a little bit too much. So it's all dependent. Yeah. But I think the main thing is some countries, there's obviously laws around piercing you can get. So obviously you have to abide by that. And then secondly, how mature and responsible you are to like clean it. Are you gonna catch it? Will it interfere if you wanna do swimming or sports? Things like that. Yeah. And then also guys, when you first get a piercing as well, sometimes you have to have the most ugliest like piece oh. of like hoop yeah. or stud in there. You don't get the pretty ones straight no. away. So you have to commit for like at least six months having a big like kind of really horrible colored bit of yeah. metal. Yeah, because I recently got my Traeger stunt and I like it, I really love it, but it doesn't look like- It's not it's your Traeger, most... is it? It's oh, not your, my Traeger. Um, your Helix. My Helix, yeah. sorry. It doesn't look like a pretty piercing at the moment because that's the one it had to get yeah, pierced have with to have and I have to one. wait. Yeah. yeah, so there's lots to think about. It's a big commitment and you might think, oh, I can just take it out and heal up, but quite often you can be left with a big scar there as well. So the next question is from Malak Butterfly and she said, what was your first kiss like? What, your one or? You. <laughs> Um, because you kind of admitted you had one in the other video, didn't well, you? Well, it wasn't, I haven't really had like a first proper kiss, if that makes sense. Oh yeah, that's the family fizz one, wasn't it? Because yeah. we sat in the same bed. I can't really remember my... I, I think it, I was just really nervous and it was really awkward. And like, remember, this is so funny. I can remember more about my best friend's first kiss. Her first kiss was with somebody at school and they banged teeth and I literally took the mick out of her for ages for <laughs> That's funny. So yeah, that's I can funny. remember that one more than my own. <laughs> that's really funny. But it's like in high school. So the next one is from Sir Abs and she said, how many boyfriends should you have? Shit, that's, oh, I, that's like, there is no set amount you should have. People tend to have a few boyfriends before they meet the love of their life. Like you have to kind of date, if, you know, you have to d date for a little while, don't you? To, to you like, or be friends with other people until you find out what you like and who you like. Yeah, but I so don't think I don't think that's like a rule or anything, but I feel like most people, maybe they might have a couple of boyfriends and then they meet the love of their life and they stay together. Some people um, will have like one boyfriend or one husband for the whole life. Like there's no set rule really. I guess it's what you're comfortable with and how your life pans out and who you meet and how it goes. Yeah. So the next question is from Tanisha and she said, what's the oldest age you'd let me a date? Um, like maybe only one year older than what you are. Okay. Yeah. I think we spoke about this a bit in yeah. the last video. Yeah, it's all dependent on how old Mia is because if she was 20 and then she wanted to date someone who's 25, it wouldn't seem as bad as if she was 16 and she's dating someone five years older than her. Yeah. I think the younger you are, like the closer in age it should be and the older you are, then it doesn't matter so much. I think like if you're under 20, you're still like very young, very innocent, very vulnerable, very naive. So I would prefer if your boyfriend was close to an age to you. So he was still in that naive, vulnerable age. So you're both kind of like coming of age together rather than you were yeah. with someone who's more older and experienced. I think that's more inappropriate. Does yeah, that make that, sense? That's age is just yeah. a number. Yeah, age is just sense. a number, I get that. But yeah, these questions are so uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> so the next question is from Alice. And she said, do you want Mia to have a baby at 16? Of course not, no. <laughs> not that, obviously I had Mia when I was 16, so I'm not saying, you know, like there's anything bad about that because yeah. like you happened for a reason. I know. But that doesn't mean that I would want it to happen to Mia still, like yeah. have a baby at 16, of course not. I can't even imagine like how you would cope. I can't imagine you being pregnant. I was different to Mia basically. When I was 16, yeah. I was completely different. I was way more mature, I was way more rebellious. That I was just different mentally wasn't I to, to what you are now. Well, so. I don't know what you like. So I definitely, <laughs> so I definitely, well, I've spoken to you about it, haven't I? I definitely, right, yeah. do, I definitely don't think, and I don't want Mia to have a baby at 16, no way. She could not handle it, and just not you, is it? Yeah, I wouldn't be able to have a baby. Because you have said to me, you were like, mum, I'm gonna be 16 this year, and I can't believe you were pregnant with me when you're 16, because you were like, I can't imagine me being pregnant at 16. Yeah, I, and I can't imagine it either. Yeah. <laughs> It's weird. <laughs> so the next question is from Alana and she said, do you think it's okay for me being a girl to make the first move on my crush? Um, I definitely don't think there's any rules in that. Of course not. I think girls and boys, I think girls should be able to propose to boys and vice versa. We live in a world now where 
girls are empowered and they don't have to just wait to be rescued by the prince. Do you <laughs> know what good. I mean? Yeah, I know what yeah. you mean. Yeah. <laughs> so the next question is, what age should I get pregnant? Well, it's kind of like one of those questions where I'm going to say it's all dependent on the person <laughs> and how yeah. old you are. Ideally, you should be um, you shouldn't be underage, that would be dreadful. And I think you should be in a relationship with somebody who you really love and respect and who they, they love and respect you back and that you're you're making the right decision, like you're gonna be committing to having a child together for the rest of your life. So even if you two separate, you're still gonna be responsible for that same child. So you're always gonna be intertwined for the rest of your life. Like it's a massive decision to make. It's physically gonna be tiring on your body and it's a huge commitment. So it's not something that you should like, like rush. rush into to, so it's, yeah. you shouldn't be like because I I'm, I'm taking it probably similar age to Mia so obviously I think you've got it's a, something which should be a long way off because you should just be enjoying life and being a bit more carefree and then later on you'll know when it's right you'll meet somebody and hopefully you know you'll be able to have a family together but at the moment yeah. if you're like Mia's age definitely it's not a good age to get pregnant no definitely. I feel like <laughs> I mean I've been pregnant at 16 and I know what it's like and it was really really hard and isolating I'm probably gonna wait until like my late 20s yeah I, I think feel that's like a good age for me anyway so I obviously don't know how I'll be in my late 20s but I feel like for me that will probably be a good age because I don't feel like I want to wait ages if that makes sense to have a baby yeah. I want to I don't want to be like super old but at the same time I don't want to obviously be really Really yeah, I mean you can it's it's perfect I'm not saying there's anything wrong with being a teen mum in a sense because I have been one and there's lots of you who've commented before on our channel and said you're a teen mum you hate it when people judge you for being a young mum um, but obviously it's very very hard being a young mum isn't it and then I also think it's perfectly fine for women if they want to wait until they're a lot older but I yeah. think the average age is like around 29, 30, 30 and um, yeah. and you feel comfortable with that maybe it's because you, your teens in your 20s have loads of fun and travel and do things like that and then you still got um, a lot of youth um, in you to sort of start trying for a baby and it's a lot more easier in your 30s than if you wait until your 40s as well because yeah. your eggs you've still got lots of eggs left see when we yeah. have all this to think about don't we like all this timing yeah. it's, I wish it wasn't like that so the next question is from Natasha Starflower and she Ooh. said has your mum ever had an embarrassing period accident yeah I think I've had loads can I, you say one particular one one time I was in the train station and I used the menstrual cup and I was using it for the first time okay. this was like seven years ago when they first came out um I know they're really popular now but I can remember like I took the menstrual cup out and it's just full of blood and then I was in the cubicle and I, I didn't know what to do I had my yeah. knickers around my ankles and I quickly I shuffled out when I was looking rinsed it in the sink and came back in I didn't know what to do that was oh. like my first time using it it was really like kind of awkward oh sorry about that yeah and I think I've leaked before loads of times I've been wearing like shorts and I've leaked and sometimes it feels like it's way worse than what it is and then when you look there's hardly anything there yeah. but you notice that it feels like I feel you're like literally like you feel me. like it's going to be like a huge amount of blood but then there's something yeah. a Amount. I feel like that happened to me before when we were in Disneyland in the US. I felt I basically I leaked a bit, but it wasn't like enough to even go through my trousers. But I thought I had like yeah. probably leaked. Yeah, in your head. Can you remember free... that? Because I think I asked you, do I yeah. have like? Yeah, can you see I had to look. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a bit <laughs> embarrassing. <laughs> Don't be embarrassed. It's completely natural and normal. Us girls, we shouldn't feel ashamed of our periods. So the next question is from Anika, and she said, "How many boyfriends before?" Down. So, how many boyfriends did you have? I had a few couple like silly boy. Well, I call them silly boyfriends. You know when you kind of like it's not date someone for like a day and that at like high school, nothing serious. But two, I had two serious boyfriends before that. Obviously, me as dad and then somebody else. Okay. So two. Yeah. I went on like a few dates when I was a single mum with you. I didn't really have any serious boyfriends, so yeah. just two. But then Anything when like I met Darren, then I was like, oh my goodness, he is literally the love <laughs> of my life. I just knew it straight away. Cause me and Darren didn't date. I meet each other when we first met. Um, we were friends for like a year and um, I really, really liked him. Not straight away actually. When I first met him, I wasn't actually that keen on him. I didn't quite get him. But after a while, when I started um, like meeting up with him and I really had a great time, I thought he was really funny and stuff like that. And um, I really started liking him. So I'm really glad that like what's happened, like we've got kids together and I think it's like a dream come true. Oh, that's like when sweet. I think back on it, we almost probably wouldn't have got together, but we did. So oh, that's nice. can you remember when you first met Dara? I can you or not? You were very young, weren't you? Not really. No, I can't. Oh, I've got a photo, a really old selfie, uh, which I found ages ago of us. Yeah, me, you and Darren. Yeah, it's really yeah. blurry though, so I can't. I wouldn't be able to share anything. But it's like, oh. it's really sweet. So the next question is from Letitia Angel Gretch. I'm sorry if I said that wrong. Question for Mum: What kind of boyfriend do you want? me today I don't know it's really hard like I don't want to put any pressure on like you or anybody potential 
potential boyfriends. Um, I hope that he's really kind and respectful. Yeah. Of course. I'd like if he didn't drink alcohol. And, it, yeah. and if he was a vegan, that would be obviously really ideal. <laughs> and then, yeah. um, this could be huge lift. Yeah, yeah the, the, like, the amount of possible yeah. <laughs> like, people is going to be has really, If he has really um, good, like, oral hygiene, like he brushes his teeth and stuff. Okay. Yeah, that's, that, that's really important yeah. for me. And he yeah. doesn't smoke. And he doesn't swear. <laughs> yeah. And um, it'd be really good if he spoke Spanish. Oh yeah. I just want him to be a nice person. Yeah. And I want him yeah. to respect himself as well. So that's why I don't like the smoking element. Yeah, I know what you mean by that. So the next question is from Harriet and she said, can you tell if you're going to have big or small boobs? I don't really know because because I think that when I was younger, I started puberty before Harriet, my sister. It's funny because this has just called Harriet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I realised that and, and I um, said it. I, I like, got oh. boobs straight away and they were quite big to begin with. Almost When I say big, they like got big straight away. But then um, Harriet didn't have any for ages, and now Harriet's got like bigger boobs than me. But she so. started puberty later, and they were smaller. Like she always had like a. I hope you don't mind me saying this, Harriet. Like this is helpful for people. But she had like a flat chest, no boobs, and then as a woman, they just suddenly grew, and then she had massive ones. But whereas I had them before her, but then they didn't really grow. So I don't think oh. you can really tell, to be honest. Yeah. So like the size of your boobs, can it be genetic? Like your um, mom and your grand. I think you like... may be from your grandma. Talking about boobies, <laughs> Mom's currently having to breastfeed Co and my little brother. Yeah. Yeah, Darren just brought him in, so um, if you're wondering what I'm doing, little Coco's having his milk. So yeah, I don't think there's any like way for you to really tell until you just like just see what happens, really. But I guess yeah. if your mum and your nanny have got big boobs, then it's more likely that you'll have big boobs. So if they've got smaller boobs, you're more likely to have smaller boobs. But um, yeah. other factors can um, make make a difference as well, or can't yeah. they, as well. So the next question is from Afra, and she said, how to build a best friend relationship with your mum. I'm not at all close with my mum. We, we've had moments where we haven't been that close, haven't we? Yeah. And we do sometimes like that get annoyed with each other don't we yeah i feel like it's kind of like of any relationship you can be close and then not be so close i think we spend a lot of time together though yeah i think that's really helped i've spent a lot of time with me and she's been involved in a lot of adult conversations and a lot of my adult life as well haven't you like i let you sit sometimes me and darren will be talking and you'll join in with the conversation so i think what it yeah. is maybe like there's some moments instead of being upstairs in your bedroom i'm just guessing this is might be a situation and like shutting yourself off for some periods of time maybe like just come down for like half an hour 30 minutes and just spend some time with your mum sit with her ask if she wants some help and just ask her some questions about herself maybe you could ask her some questions about what it was like when she was younger or how her day's been because everybody loves talking about themselves yeah don't they yeah and um she'll probably be really like maybe at first but like, find, find it a bit <laughs> weird you're asking for something <laughs> just say mum I um I mean now might be a really great time for it because of what's going on in the world so you maybe say mum is it all right if I just spend some time with you I just feel like I just want to be with you and yeah. she'll probably find that as really flattering and be really like honestly she'll probably absolutely love it obviously not when she's super stressed because you might get a reaction you don't want like oh I'm just really busy leave me alone so make sure yeah. she's not like super super busy and stressed because that's not being fair because she might not be able to yeah but, like everybody has some time in their day when they sit down so maybe well like, if she comes in from work if your mum goes oh no because everybody's in lockdown at the moment aren't yeah they? so lockdown's a perfect example it's a perfect yeah. time for it yeah. yeah yeah so maybe just spend more time with her and ask her loads of questions about herself and maybe do some nice things for her and then gradually over time you'll feel like you're getting close and your relationship flourishes i think yeah i think it's just about like putting in effort yourself as well not just like yeah i think with any like friendship sometimes you can feel like it's reliant on the other person but it's also like you need to maybe do stuff yourself as well yeah it's so easy to think that yeah. somebody else is in the wrong it's like i've had to be working on this for many years sometimes you can take on the role that like you're kind of like the victim and everybody else is treating you badly and sometimes when you look back on things like even with when i was younger with my mum we, we used to have a lot of tension between us so i was quite rebellious but looking back on it there's some lot of things that I did which was not very nice to my mum like she wasn't the bad guy all the time yeah like, I think sometimes when especially yeah. when you're a teenager you can kind of have this like enemy like situation going on like the parents are the enemy but they're really not yeah. they want the best for you and honestly they're probably if you ask your mum some questions about herself and what it was like when she's younger or about her day she'd love to talk about it and it's a great like icebreaker or maybe you could just randomly like say a joke or something or yeah or like mum yeah. did you know that and like say like I don't know just something <laughs> yeah. random if you yeah. want if you don't want to be like too deep in me meaningful straight away. When did your mum start getting boobs? 10. 
10. I was okay. like 10, yeah. I think that's when I started puberty. I think that's the same for me yeah. as well. I was about 10. Sarah said, I haven't had my first kiss or make out yet, and I'm nervous I'll do it wrong. Any advice? With your first kiss, I always think that it's like a new experience for you, so you should just enjoy it and not overthink it too much, and always think about the other person. They're probably really nervous as well, and I don't think there's any right or wrong way to do it. And no. Even if you do bang teeth, don't worry about it. I think what's really important is having good clean breath, though. Okay. I think that's yeah. probably a good one. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Don't get no funny ideas, man. <laughs> <laughs> Aww. Aww. He was breathing, he was going. <laughs> Aww. Aww. Do you want to say bye to the meerkorns? Yeah? Aww. Thank you for doing this video with me, Mom. Uh, I hope I. I hope I wasn't too cringe and I hope no, I answered were. them all okay. <laughs> you did. <laughs> so, Miracles, if you're in around here, make sure to click subscribe. Also, check out this video here. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, Bye. guys.